We're about 10 minutes into this uh, trading day and stocks are uh, now mixed. S&P just went negative on us by a few points. Dow up 47, NASDAQ up 75. Uh, joining us now is Mark Cooper. He is the CEO of PJ Solomon. And Mark, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, we want to take a closer look at M&A activity with you this morning. And I know uh, 2019 was pretty good for M&A, but 2020 was off to a slower start even before uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Where do things stand right now with M&A? Uh, a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> pleasure to be in my living room talking to you in your living room. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think you characterized it correctly. Uh, last year was a good year. Uh, year to date before uh, this really got rolling uh, was down, but active. I would say a week ago, it, the, the curtain dropped, if you, if you will. Uh, and that was really uh, coinciding with all the shutdowns. Uh, and I think the M&A markets for now are pretty much shut down. Uh, now you'll see sporadic transactions happen, and there certainly are transactions in the queue or that have been signed uh, and that might close over time. But uh, new deals, uh, that's not what people are thinking about right now. Hey, Mark, Brian here. Always good to speak with you. What are you hearing right now uh, in the oil space? This sector has been hammered because of the plunge in oil prices. When do those mergers start? They have, they're going to have to happen. Uh, yes. So so that that's one area where you could see, and I think in general, where acquisitions might happen is under the heading of uh, can two companies come together and survive uh, uh, the shock of the environment. Now, with an oil, it's the shock of oil prices. Uh, so, in fact, we're looking at a number of transactions with our oil franchise in Houston where two companies can get together and better weather the storm. So we'll see some of that. I think, frankly, though, much of what you will see in the oil patch uh, is more traditional restructuring. <clears throat> Mark, what about the airlines? Uh, a future looks very uncertain, mm -hmm. even for some of the largest airlines. Do you think we're going to have to see uh, some merger activity there just simply to have these airlines survive at this point? Well, I think we're still a little bit away from thinking about uh, mergers in the airline space. I think it's now in the government's hands as to whether there'll be bailouts for these uh, for these airlines. Could it be down the road like it was in 2008 that the government will force uh, mergers to have uh, stronger uh, participants in the marketplace? Possibly. Uh, but I think for right now, it's about what the governments will do to support these airlines going forward. Obviously, a critical part of our economy uh, once, our, once we get uh, going again, which, by the way, being the optimist that I am, we certainly will get going again. Hey, Mark, Brian Chung here. So point taken on saying that no mergers for right now, a lot of companies just trying to figure out for the cash that they have what to do with it now. But in the future, there's a lot of talk about how the coronavirus could structurally change just the society that we live in. And if there were to be some V or U-shaped recovery and we do get out of this at some point in time and companies would feel comfortable dipping back into M&A, are there certain industries that you're watching for consolidation with this post-coronavirus world that could be coming down the pike? Yeah, let me let me step back a second, though, just to make sure that the viewers understand what the progression will be. Uh, number one on the hit parade right now is liquidity, is survival. Uh, and it's not dissimilar from 2008, which everyone is thinking about whether they're cash strapped now or they're not, whether they're healthy or they're unhealthy. They're thinking about uh, how they weathered this storm and who knows how long this storm might be. So there's going to be a fair amount of activity. You wouldn't call it merger activity, but you would call it investment activity. And I think you'll see the private equity with their dry powder playing a very significant role in investing in companies a la what uh, Whole Foods did back in 2008 with Leonard Green and investing a half a billion dollars to keep them uh, going through this through that difficult time. So that's the first step. The second step is there will be mergers and the mergers will come, in my view, in a few uh, in a few flavors. Uh, one will be, as we talked about before, uh, difficult industries in difficult industries like retail and in site based oriented businesses, movie theaters, uh, amusement parks, uh, the like, those might have companies coming together to show greater strength uh, and have synergies in order to withstand the difficult marketplace. I think the second 
uh, merger activity you're going to see are those or acquisitions where there's been a revaluation and there will be a revaluation and there will be some very attractive companies out there that the healthier companies can invest can in fact invest in or acquire in order to grow their businesses. So what are those areas? Uh, like I said, certainly the hardest hit uh, are going to be the site based entertainment businesses, uh, no doubt. Uh, but I think it could be pretty much across the board. The restaurant industry is going to be decimated for the time being. So there could be very interesting activity there. But I think it could be in any industry where uh, valuations have rationalized and the stronger players have the opportunity now to come in and buy value. Mark, you know this better than anyone, the, the investment banking industry and, and what you do is, is so much in person, so client oriented, very relationship building. How is that? How has the coronavirus changed how you do business and, and how do you think it will shape uh, investment banking uh, looking out over the next year or two? Yeah, that's an interesting question because I'm, I'm, I'm living it as we speak. In fact, uh, I, I ventured into the office on Monday and Tuesday just to get uh, our organization uh, fully capable technologically to work at home and you know we've employed some very interesting video conferencing capabilities and other capabilities that allow us to, file sharing capabilities allow us to do so i think it's becoming far more the norm and far more acceptable that people do can have uh can do remote uh uh remote transactions can do uh video as an alternative to on to insight meetings and it was sort of frowned upon if a, if you didn't go visit a client a client would say hey are you interested when in fact now it's quite the contrary so i think we're we're actually working quite uh, efficiently uh with the group where we're staying in touch with our clients uh we have many means of doing so uh transactions are happening i was just uh hearing in one of our restructuring cases where the court is acting in a virtual fashion. So they're acting online as opposed to in person. So this is going to, I think this is going to be more the norm uh, for the foreseeable future. And then I think the interesting thing will be over the next six months or 12, nine months when we get back to normal operating activity, do we continue some of these trends? A couple of my colleagues have said, gee, I've been, I've never been more efficient because I get up at, uh, seven in the morning, I sleep in a little bit because I don't have to commute an hour and I'm at my desk working 24 seven. So it's an, it's an, it's going to be an interesting exercise. Yeah, for sure. Mark Cooper, PJ Solomon, CEO, we're all adapting to these changing times. Thanks so much for being with us. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.